Okay, so a lot of you want to know why am I buying these cards and I just like them. I like the artwork. I know I am in the minority, but I would say for Falia, I think her artwork is actually very good. Of the promo artwork, it's kind of, how can I say, it? it's like, it's not beautiful, it's just kind of scary. It reminds me a lot of Eldritch Moon. It's kind of like she's scared and that's good. So is this Philia like the other Philia? Is this a guaranteed, what's Philia now? $12? Can you buy this at a dollar and then one day it becomes $10 just like Philia or Malera or any of those princesses that I have uh, heavily invested in? The answer is maybe. It's not guaranteed. I knew the other Philia Guardian would go up and this is how I knew. Because she was already seeing play in Death and Taxes and Legacy. Now her modern deck, you could say, was not the best. It's still not the best. But I played her in Legacy and she held up. And I'm like, wow. You know, she's competing against some of the best cards of all time. And she does something that's unique. In Legacy, you might say, oh, there's better cantrips, which is true. And she is very good against cantrips. But she already was seeing... Fringe playability in Legacy, and I like that. Malera, the same deal with Malera. She was seeing play as mostly a one of in Malera Pod at the time, but uh, you no, know, still a great card. So, why do I like this card? It is less than a dollar. Is it a, a, less than a dollar? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, that does not tell me the price, but assume it is less than a dollar. So this card is less than a dollar. It does a few different unique, for the promo it's less than a dollar. I think the regular one is still $1.50, maybe $1.75. When it rotates out, you will have the opportunity to buy to your heart's content of this card. There will be very few people who want it. Draena is another story. Draena is already going up in price. I knew this because I saw the commander deck and I said, wait a second, huh. This card is like below $3, it's $2.72. But it's a vampire and it's actually very good. Okay, people are gonna figure that one out very quickly and they have. So I don't know if you can buy her for $2.72 anymore. Maybe you can, but I haven't price checked her. This card, I have a gut feeling, will actually go down in price. And the reason it will go down in price is because A, there's so many copies of it, and B, most people do not understand why it's good. So why is it good? It dies to Lightning Bolt, it dies to Fatal Puss when you crack a land, which pretty much is every card. It's good because it sees friends play. It sees play in the sideboard of Death and Taxes. How do I know this? Because I play in Death and Taxes. Now, is it better than a regular Falia? No, you would never play, you would never replace a regular Falia with this one, right? You would always be like, huh, okay, no, I, I'm gonna play this as additional copy. It is, it actually was very good against Splinter Twin. And that's when I played it because all the creatures and non-basic lands your opponent controls enter the battlefield tapped. That means the tokens and all this stuff are coming in play tapped. It is very good against plans where your opponent is trying to kill you by producing a mass amount of tokens that will just instantly disappear at the end of their turn for an alpha strike. This prevents that. Now you might say, oh, Splinter Twin's banned. Splinter Twin's no good anymore. And that would be true. And Splinter Twin does have answers to this card, including you know most noticeable, most Iconically, the lightning bolt to the creature, but it has unique abilities. I like cards, one, I like this card because it's so cheap and I don't feel like it will continue to go down. I could be wrong, but I don't feel like it will continue to go down in price. And two, uh, most importantly, it has a set of unique abilities. Ooh, Blood Braid Elf, okay. Uh, it has a set of unique abilities that make it so I could see a circumstance where people are playing twin and they're playing a twin-like deck, which is producing all these. One of the most common effects that EDH players like is they like to produce tokens that 
at the end of turn die. And this is a win mechanic, right? Dredge had a similar win mechanic where they just had to sacrifice everything to try to kill you. And there's very, combo decks are very linear in that way. So if you can delay them for one turn, that's enough because that's the one turn you need. And that's why I like it. I feel like in the future, it could be very good sideboard tech against whatever is coming. Now there is no Splinter Twin deck out there right now. But I'm, I'm almost certain that in the next five years, there will be a combo centric deck, which is producing tokens, where if the tokens do not attack you directly, you are going to, or the, the creature has to come in play untapped. That's very important for the creature. So reanimation, it is quite important for your Grizzle brand to hit your opponent so you can gain the seven life, right? So if it was uh, a card or, Actually, another interesting card would be Sneak Attack through the Breach, right? Show and Tell. They really are rely on you putting the creature in and attacking that turn with it. And if you can delay them by keeping it tapped, it either dies or returns back to your hand or something happens that's not good for your opponent. So I like it. It's expensive in terms of its mana cost. It is very cheap. I expect this card to continue to plummet into oblivion, but at the same time, you know, at the same time, I just, I, my gut tells me it has very unique attributes, which will make it valuable, valuable, like being more than $5 in the future. Uh, and it, it does see fringe play in the same decks that Falia, the original Falia is part of. Eldritch Moon is also set that there's not that many, if you can, if you look at Kaladas, Aether Revolve, and Aldric Moon, uh, Shadows over Instrad, Battle, and Oath, maybe Oath has less, but Aldric Moon was pretty much a forgotten set. Uh, it was not a set that was widely open because it didn't have Masterpieces, and the set after it had Masterpieces, and people were exhausted from Battle for Zendikar. You know, it is what it is. Anyway, bye guys.